And people are already using it in ways that are unexpected, that we had not thought about. It's like if you, if you create a map of, I don't know, a city, uh, you cannot predict what people will use it for, right? Where are they trying to go? So this is a recording of the whole brain of mice. For the first time, we've been able to map the entire brain. It sets the benchmark now for, for understanding all of these brain areas that previously hadn't really been characterized. Now we've got this comprehensive coverage uh, we can study all of these different areas and it's turning out that some of the ones that seem most important uh, in these cognitive tasks are really ones that just weren't on the map at all. The data needs to be open to anyone in the world uh, to analyze uh, and it's really been a lot of work just to make that happen. For a public release of a large data set like this it needed all sorts of quality control measures which are things we had to develop. Now anybody can analyze this data. I have to say that I've been running a lab for 30 years and uh, the way we run a lab is more like we're chasing a project and we will go as fast as we can whereas in the IBL in International Brain Laboratory, there's a real effort to make the code excellent. A testament to that is that the data that we produced right now are being accessed by lots of people. Kenneth, you may have some thoughts about ways to access those data. Oh yes, go to data.internationalbrainlab.org.